has to do with sigma notation. So what you do with sigma notation is you find the first three terms, so term one, term two, and term three. How do we do that? Well, you plug whatever this number is into there to find term one. So it'll be two times one plus four, which is six. Then you let this number go up by one, and that'll be for term two. So it'll be two times two plus four, which is eight. And then you do the last one, so what I want you to realize is that this number will not always be the same as this number. Okay, so term one isn't always going to have a one there. Term two isn't always going to have a two there and term three isn't going to have a three there. Because sometimes this number at the bottom is not a one. And we'll look at examples like that just now. Now, Kevin, why did you say the first three terms? Because if you do the first three terms, you will be able to see what kind of pattern you have. You have six, eight, and 10. That is arithmetic. Now, did you know that this symbol, sigma, actually stands for the sum? So it's actually saying, find the sum of all the terms. Kevin, how many terms are there? To find the number of terms, please don't just always look at that number, because once again, when they change this number at the bottom, then all of that changes. So what you do instead is you take the top number minus the bottom number, and then you plus one. So the top number is 20. The bottom number is one, and then you plus one, and that gives you 20. So yes, it is a 20 now, but that's just because the number at the bottom is a one. So just look out for that. All right, so we have 20 terms we have an arithmetic pattern, and so we can use the sum formula for an arithmetic sequence. And so we're finding the sum of 20 terms, so we say 20 over two. A is term one, which we found as six, and then 20 minus one, and now the common difference, we're plusing two each time, so you can just say two. Oh, it gives us quite a nice number, 500 is the final answer.